Welcome little scientists, it's Miss Gisa, and today we're going to continue learning about salmon. Do you remember the salmon life cycle that we talked about yesterday with the book Salmon Creek? If you haven't listened to that story yet, be sure to do so, because today we're going to continue learning about the life cycle of a salmon in the story called Salmon, written by Deborah Hodge and illustrated by Nancy Gray Ogle. And then watch till the end so you don't miss the lesson. Salmon are graceful swimmers. Their long silver bodies glide through the water. Salmon are fish. Fish have gills for breathing and fins for swimming. Fish have backbones. Their bodies are covered with scales. Baby fish hatch from eggs. Salmon are strong. They can leap up waterfalls and swim against powerful currents. This is a coho salmon. And these Atlantic salmon are swimming in the ocean. There are two main kinds of salmon, Pacific salmon and Atlantic salmon. Some species of Pacific salmon are sockeye, chum, pink, coho, Chinook, steelhead, and masu. There's only one species of Atlantic salmon. A salmon is silver for most of its life. It changes colors when it is ready to spawn, which is when it produces eggs. The salmon on these pages are shown in both their silver and spawning colors. Their average weights are also given. Which salmon looks the biggest to you? How about the smallest? Salmon are born in freshwater streams. When they are old enough, they swim to the salty ocean. Here they grow into adults. When salmon are ready to spawn, they swim back to the streams where they hatched, their home streams. Wherever they live, Salmon need clean, cool water. Cool water carries the oxygen that salmon breathe. Cool water also helps salmon eggs hatch at the right time. If the water is too warm, the eggs hatch early before there is food in the stream for the baby salmon. Salmon live in northern areas where the water is cool. A salmon stream has gravel and running water. Trees shade the stream and keep it cool. Floating plants and insects are food for baby salmon. Salmon are one of the few fish that live in both fresh water and salt water. A salmon's body is built for swimming. This is a pink salmon. A salmon's color helps it hide. From above, its dark back blends in with the shadows in the water. From below, its silver belly looks like light on the water's surface. Let's look at the parts of a salmon. You can see the scales on top of the skin protect the salmon. They are covered with a slime that help the salmon glide through the water. Its gills help the salmon breathe. Water goes in the mouth and out the gills. The gills soak up oxygen in the water and pass it through the body. Then you'll see the lateral line, tiny pores in a salmon's lateral line feel movement. They tell the salmon when food or enemies are near. You can see the different fins. The salmon swings its tail fin to swim. It uses its side fins to stop, turn, and back up. Other fins are used for balance. A salmon's backbone flexes when swimming. Strong tail muscles make the salmon go fast. The salmon fills its swim bladder by gulping air. When the swim bladder is full, the salmon can float. Over its lifetime, a salmon changes and grows. It passes through a series of stages called a life cycle. Here is the life cycle of a chum salmon. All salmon go through these stages. Step one, salmon begin as eggs in a stream. Step two, alevin. Eggs hatch into baby salmon called alevin. Step three, fry. When alevin are ready to swim, they are called fry. Fry look like tiny fish.
Step four, smolts. When fry are silver and ready to swim to the ocean, they are called smolts. Step five, adults. In the ocean, smolts feed and grow into adults. When adult salmon are ready to spawn, they swim back to their home streams. Step six, spawners. At the stream, spawners lay and fertilize eggs. After spawning, most Pacific salmon die. Steelhead and Atlantic salmon swim back to the ocean. The Atlantic salmon has an extra stage in its life cycle, the par. A par is a stage between the fry and the smolt. Baby salmon. A mother salmon lays her eggs in a stream, usually in the fall. She buries them in a hollow in the gravel called a red. The gravel helps hide the eggs from the hungry birds, raccoons, and other fish. The egg hatch in late winter or spring. A baby salmon, or alevin, is about as long as a pin. A yolk sac hangs from its middle. It provides the alevin with food. An alevin stays in the gravel until its yolk sac is gone, up to three months. Can you find the yolk sac on the alevin? An alevin's yolk sac gets used up as the alevin grows. This is a close-up of a masu alevin. Baby coho are growing inside these eggs. Their dark eyes show through. Some eggs have hatched. The alevin hide in the shadows. Can you find the babies that have hatched? They're called the alevin. A mother salmon lays hundreds of eggs. The largest species, Chinook, an Atlantic salmon, lay up to 8,000 eggs. Once its yolk sac is gone, a baby salmon is called a fry. A fry wriggles to the water's surface and gulps air. With a swim bladder full, this little fish can swim and hunt for food. Fry eat tiny plants and insects. Chum and pink fry swim to the ocean soon after leaving the red. Other species stay in lakes or streams for a year or more. When a young salmon is ready to go to the ocean, its skin turns silver. Now it is called a smolt. As smolts swim to the ocean, they pass through an estuary where a river meets an ocean. Here they feed and get used to the ocean's salty water. These are sockeye smolts. Stripes on a fry's body are called par marks. The marks help these Chinook fry hide. This is a close-up of a salmon scale. Scientists know how old a salmon is by counting the rings on a scale. This scale shows that the salmon is five years old. Salmon become adults in the ocean. Here, the food is plentiful and there is space for them to grow. Salmon stay in the ocean for one to eight years, depending on the kind or the species. In the ocean, Salmon may swim thousands of miles. They eat shrimp, squid, and smaller fish such as herring. Salmon also feed on plankton, which are tiny floating plants and animals. Salmon travel in groups. This is safer than swimming alone. A seal is hunting these Atlantic salmon. Chinook and Atlantic salmon spend the most time feeding in the ocean. This is why they are the biggest species. This is a close-up of this tiny krill that some salmon eat. The krill's pink color makes a salmon's flesh turn red. Salmon leave the ocean when they are ready to spawn or produce eggs. They swim back to their home streams. This is called migrating. A salmon uses its keen sense of smell to find its home stream. It follows the scent of the soil, plants, and insects in the stream. Migrating salmon swim up rivers. Hundreds travel in a group called a salmon run. The salmon battle the strong current. They leap over rocks and logs and up waterfalls. The journey is long and hard, but the salmon don't give up. Salmon, such as these Chinook, may migrate as far as 2,000 miles to their home streams. Along the way, some are eaten by grizzly bears and other enemies. At the stream, it is time to spawn. The salmon's body has changed. Its skin may be red, green, purple, or black. 
The male has a hooked jaw and long teeth. Some males have a hump on their back. These changes help a salmon find a mate of its own species. The mother salmon fans her tail to scoop out a red, which is a hollow in the stream's gravel. Within the red, she digs several nests. She lays up to a thousand eggs in each, then she covers them up with gravel. These sockeye salmon are spawning. As the mother lays the eggs, the father fertilizes them with white milt. Now the eggs can grow into baby salmon. Male salmon battle with their sharp teeth. The strongest male will spawn with the female of his choice. These are chum salmon. This Atlantic salmon is digging a nest. A new life cycle begins. After spawning, the salmon are worn out. Their bodies are tired from the long journey. The parents guard their eggs for a few days. Then, most Pacific salmon die. But steelhead and Atlantic salmon return to the ocean. They will spawn again in other years. Under the gravel, the eggs are growing. New salmon will hatch in a few months. The bodies of the salmon break down. They add nutrients to the stream that help new plants grow. These plants will be food for the baby salmon that hatch next season. A strong Atlantic salmon may spawn up to several times. As one life cycle ends, another begins. Salmon in the food chain. In nature, animals eat and are eaten. One creature is food for another. This is called a food chain. Salmon are part of the food chain. Trout, otters, eels, raccoons, and mergensers, fish-eating ducks, feed on salmon eggs and baby salmon. Ospreys, loons, and herons like to eat smolts. In the ocean, tuna, cod, seals, sharks, and whales feed on salmon. This is a close-up of ocean plankton, an important part of the food chain. Salmon grow big feeding on plankton. A salmon faces many dangers. Of the 2,500 eggs laid, only a few will become spawning adults. Eagles, bears, and other animals go to spawning rivers in the fall. They feed on dead and dying salmon. The animals depend on this rich food to stay alive. Salmon has always been an important food for North American people. But over time, too many fish were caught. The number of salmon kept dropping. Now there are strict rules about how many salmon can be fished. To survive, salmon need food and clean, cool water. If harmful chemicals spill into the water, the salmon's food may be spoiled. When trees are cut from riverbanks, streams get too warm. The salmon get sick or their eggs hatch too soon. Salmon depend on clean water and space to swim and grow. These sockeye salmon are migrating to their home stream. Scientists count the salmon that return to spawn. This helps them decide how many can be fished. Some salmon are born in a hatchery. Here, the babies are fed and protected until they are big enough to go to the ocean. All right, little scientists, let's go and do an activity together. All right, little scientists, let's use my safari models of salmon life cycle to review what we just learned. So, which one of these starts the life cycle of a salmon? You're right! The eggs. Salmon eggs are laid in gravel nests in freshwater streams. The eggs are then fertilized by multiple males. How about the second step in the life cycle? Which one of these comes next? That's right, the alevin, right here. Salmon hatchlings are referred to as alevin or sack fry. The yolk of the egg they hatched from is still attached. 
Alvin will remain near their nests for months until they finish absorbing the nutrients from their yolk sac. What comes next, little scientists? That's right. Par. Do you see the little stripes on the side of their bodies? As salmon grow, they become par and develop stripes to help them camouflage and avoid predators. They leave the nest but will still remain in the freshwater streams for up to three years. Now, the next step in the salmon life cycle is the smolt. And here we have the smolt. Now, when the par is old enough, it'll travel to the ocean where it will mature and live much of its life. In the ocean, they lose their stripes and appear more silver and blue, and this is when they are smolts. Then, finally, the full-grown salmon. So when it's time for the salmon to spawn, they will change dramatically. Many species will change from the silvery color that you see as a smolt to a deep red they also develop a little bit of a hump and sharp teeth. Male salmon jaws grow long and hooked, which is known as a kipe. Then they begin the long and difficult journey back to the stream in which they were born. They always go back to where they were born. They may travel as far as 900 miles in order to find their spawning grounds. After the females lay their eggs, remember back where they were born, and the males fertilize them, most salmon soon die. The journey is a long one that really tires and exhausts them. So they end up dying after that. Thank you for joining me today for our lesson on the salmon life cycle. I hope you learned a lot and Please, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss another lesson. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.